Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a good day today. As you can see here, we're going to cover my CISP exam journey and the process that I went through to obtain the coveted CISP certification. Hopefully you guys have a sense of humor because you know I do, as you can see the little image there. Hopefully you guys have a better incident response plan and disaster recovery plan in place and aren't following this example right here. Anyway, let's continue my background. U.S. Marine veteran spent four years active duty. My MOS was field wireman, which is a telecommunication technician, which consisted of installing, maintaining, configuring various different telephone switchboards, and also deploying various different uh, mediums to communicate, such as Cat three, Cat five cable, etc. Also, did a little bit outside of that since I was with an infantry unit. So, of course, I got to shoot various different guns and such. But we'll cover that in a maybe a different video. Um, after the military, I decided to pursue a career in information technology. And then in that space, I wanted to focus on the cybersecurity aspect of things. And luckily for my school, I could complete the bachelor's degree in three years. So I decided to go ahead and do a kind of double major in cybersecurity and also network infrastructure, which network infrastructure consisted of computer networking as well as system administration. So you're set, I was setting up you know, Active Directory infrastructure, what have you. While I was in college, I decided to pursue the Security Plus certification. So that was the very first cybersecurity certification I obtained. But over the years, I've acquired various different ones such as Cybersecurity Analyst Plus, Penetration Tester Plus, EJPT, et cetera, et cetera. Over the years, I've also been in various different information and technology positions, ranging from help desk all the way over to cybersecurity analyst or engineer, what have you. Uh, incident response has been a lot of my experience. Also had a minor stint in penetration testing role. Vulnerability management, worked in various different industries, of course, military, financial, tribal gaming, which would be like uh, casinos, basically the energy sector, oil and gas, education, healthcare. Out of all of those, I would have to say that the worst one by far would probably be tribal gaming or healthcare, just, just from my experience. Let's see here. Uh, I have a passion for cybersecurity. If I didn't have a passion for it, I wouldn't be in this industry. I would be working somewhere else. But I love it because I get to help mentor people. Uh, the industry is always changing, so you always have to stay up to date. If you don't stay up to date with your trade, then you ultimately become a dinosaur, and we all know what happened with them. Let's continue. Right, I'm not going to bore you with the details here. You can just go to the ICS Squared website and read about the CISP certification. It's basically one of the golden standard certifications out there. You know, everybody wants to get it, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's highly sought after, blah, blah, blah. Right. Journey started with, I researched the CISP, found my why. Why do I want to get it? You know, do I want to get more money? Do I want to get recognition, et cetera, et cetera. My why was I wanted to increase my knowledge and expertise in various different areas. And the CISP covers eight different domains that you need to be knowledgeable about. I cared more about the learning process than the CERT itself, meaning that, in my opinion, CERTs and degrees, you know, they're all fine and all, but in the end, they're, you know, just a piece of paper. You need to actually know what that cert or degree represents. So you need to know your stuff. You don't want to be one of these people out here that have all these fancy certs, but then they don't know anything about the actual job itself. They don't know what they're doing. Throughout this process, I studied for maybe around 30 days or so, one, three hours a day, roughly. I passed the exam June 10th at, I think it was around 125 questions and 45 minutes. We're going to go into greater detail as we go on through these slides here. Studying for it was definitely, definitely mentally exhausting. Some days I didn't want to study at all, but I had to force myself to say, yeah, I, I really want to get this certification. I really want to get it. So I had to push myself, you know, set aside X amount of time. You know, this is the time range where I'm going to study each day and then dedicated myself to doing that. Um, I use two different books. I recommend using, you know, more than one source to study from. And also recommend reading at least one of those books from cover to cover. I read both books. 
from cover to cover, I believe. And then I took notes, of course. I did all the end of the chapter questions and went back and reviewed each section where, and I went back and reviewed each question. And then for those questions, I went back and reviewed those sections so I could further strengthen my knowledge in that er that subject area. I right, constantly quiz myself. I, like I said, I did every end of the chapter questions. Also did the practice exams. I had used Wiley's um, test bank online. So it, it allowed me to automatically you know, grade myself or look at the grades at end of each section or exam that I did and just go back and review those, those uh, trouble areas and identified weak areas, focused on those. During the last one to two weeks, those last one to two weeks, I went hardcore into study mode. I even took off work on the exam week just so I can be sure that I was very prepared for this exam. Don't rely on memorization. There's some aspects of my memorization when it comes to exam, but to make sure to understand the concepts because those will definitely come in handy. That's how you pass the exam. Every exam is different. I have different questions. I might have questions on, you know, SDLC um, process, and you might have questions on fire extinguishers, but the exam is one mile wide, one inch deep. And I made sure I was scoring at least a 70 or higher on all practice tests. Right, already covered this, took the whole week off, studied hardcore, took the exam on Friday and passed it. I, when I was going through the exam, I thought I was failing because I was getting some pretty kind of tough questions or questions that I didn't remember from the study material. But as I say, it's an adaptive exam. So the more you, questions you answer correctly, the tougher the questions are going to be. And if you miss a certain question in that subject area, it's going to continue, continue to drill you in that subject area until I, I believe until it it thinks you're good enough to move on to the next uh, domain or section. Some questions that I didn't know, so I used the process of it, elimination. Of course, think like a manager. This isn't a you know highly technical exam. You're gonna have to look at the overall big picture and what's best for the business, and then choose your answer based off of that. Make sure to take your time, relax. I have plenty of time. As I said, I finished the exam in 45 minutes. I took short breaks just to catch a breather on the questions that I didn't really know, or if I just got kind of exhausted from doing so many questions at a time. Uh, initially, I thought I had failed the exam until I saw the printout of the paper said, hey, congrats, you provisionally passed. And I was, <laughs> I was very excited because I thought I had failed. Study material, as you can see, I use various different study material you can pick and choose from this list or you can come with your own list here. I have them graded from my own personal aspect. The CISP Official Study Guide 8th edition was by far one of the best material that I've used. It is very dry, so you're gonna have to push yourself and push yourself to get through each chapter. Also went through the Wiley practice test. As you can see here, those are great. Of course, those aren't going to be the same exact questions as on the test. Next steps, final thoughts. The exam was tough, but it was easier than what I expected. I always saw all these horror story, stories on the internet from like Reddit, what have you, like people getting 150 questions, what have you, blah, 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 getting all these tough questions. So I had made sure to thoroughly study this exam because I did not want to fail it, especially with the exam being very expensive for a lot of people, including myself. I'm not a technical person. I do not enjoy writing policies, procedures, any kind of documentation, stuff related to those, but I needed to obtain the certification for my career path. Next exam I'm going to take will maybe be those listed there but we'll see, I think I'm gonna go for the OSCP. Like I said, I am a technical hands-on keyboard person. That is what I like. I do not like creating policies, procedures, but hey, find something that you're interested in and then get good at it. Always believe in yourself. I had doubts about myself when I was going through the exam, but in the end, I ended up passing. So make sure you 
dedicate yourself to this exam and in the study process so you can pass it. I want you all to pass it on the first try. And that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please provide feedback. This is my first YouTube video about the subject. And make sure to stay cyber aware, cyber safe, and always keep learning.